This episode is sponsored by my go-to stop for makeup of all things, Revlon. Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Graham and this is Pretty Big Deal, where confidence is key. Every episode, I get to pick the brains of brilliant, inspiring, honest, new and old friends who are a pretty big deal. Today we are talking to the incredible Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Rosie is a model, beauty enthusiast, and badass business owner. Her company, Rose Inc., is a widely successful online forum that keeps visitors on the cutting edge of all things beauty. It's like, Yay! Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Okay. I'm good. I'm very pregnant. Congrats. Thank I'm you. So happy for you. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled. You're in the mommy game, like yeah. hardcore. Jack's like two and a bit now, so <gasps> we can't. I feel like we're over the hump because the first year is like. It and is then right. It just gets easier and easier and better and better. Oh. So it's the best thing. Even the challenges, the good moments, the bad moments, all of it is just, it's really incredible. I'm excited. I mean, everybody has kind of told me that exact same thing, yeah. but they're like, you don't sleep. I mean, there's I'm so exhausted, many things. like all the time. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I'm so glad we are wearing the same color. <laughs> Because I'm sure you've heard this, and I'm sure you're flattered or maybe embarrassed by it, but you are my style icon. No, I never heard that. You haven't? No. Are you serious? <laughs> no, but like I screenshot, and you are the most looks say in my saved IG folder. Aww. Seriously. Thanks, Ash. I That's really, cute. you just have it together. You have like a sense of ease and cool girl. I don't know what it is, but it's it's you, and it suits you. And the other thing that I always talk about with my friends is that you're always like recycling something. Like you don't just get a bag, wear it once, and then yeah. not wear it again. Like you're constantly wearing yeah. things. Are these looks that you put together? Yeah. Do you have a stylist that does it? Like. I want the tea because okay. I want to like, I want to know. So I've loved fashion since I can remember. And that's really why I got into modeling. So I thought I'd work on the kind of creative behind the scenes part of the industry and ended up modeling, which we can get to. At yes, point. we will. We have to. But um, I've worked with a stylist for red carpet for, you know, the last seven or eight years. And that's really when I feel like I need it because right. it's a whole other beast. But day to day, I've always put my outfits together and... I don't know, I just love it. It's like a fun, creative part of my morning. You put forward your best self and I don't know, I've just always loved clothes. It's just what it is. I collect them. I'm actually really happy to hear that you put your own looks together. Yeah, it's fun, right? So you'll be my stylist? Yeah, with okay, pleasure. Great. Love that. With pleasure. Oh, I love to You do heard it, it right I'm here. I'm telling you, I'd love to. <laughs> so this is an obnoxious stat. You're one of the highest paid models in the world. And <laughs> I know, I know. You're really like, gonna go. I know, I have to. <laughs> okay. I have to. Rosie Huntington Whiteley <laughs> is on my podcast. We have to talk about it. But I want to talk about the road to how you yeah. got there. Yeah. Because it wasn't always an easy one. No. You started really young. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear from the beginning. Yeah. I started working when I was 16. When we were 15 at school, everybody was um, encouraged to take a week of internship somewhere in a field of work that was interesting to them. And having grown up in the countryside, I had this love for fashion ever since I can really remember. My mum and I bonded over kind of buying the women's magazines mm -hmm. and we'd sit together and Go shopping for my together. birthday, I would always ask for a subscription to Elle magazine and Bazaar and things. And so I really just kind of, that was my, that was my passion. So when we were given this task of finding a place to, to, to get a, a work experience, I got out the yellow pages and I just wrote to every kind of fashion brand that I'd heard of at the time wrote off handwritten letters, posted them. I wrote off to headquarters of brands, you know, shops. I had no idea, I had no contact to the fashion industry whatsoever. And this is 16, 17 years ago. So this is even bef before the internet was really yeah. kind of booming. And um, one of the places I've written off to was a modeling agency. I came home was from school. Was it a big school. modeling agency? No, this okay. tiny, tiny modeling <laughs> agency. So I came home from school about a week later and my mum said, we got a phone call from this modeling agency and they want you to go up and intern. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm going to be going on shoots. I thought I would be out in the creative side of the industry. And of course, 
you know, cut to a few months later, I'm up in London, like walk into this tiny little office. And I realized that I was actually kind of brought up just to kind of empty ashtrays no. and do faxes and be like, you know, someone that running all the errands. It was such a tiny little agency. Humbling moment. And yeah, it was, and, and of course, like anybody who knows, like an agency, you, it's, a, it's an office. Yeah. And so it was five or six bookers sat around a table picking up phone calls. Um, you know, sending out faxes and I would just be sort of there on the computer taking, you know, taking the phone and making cups of tea and pouring wine and doing all the kind of things that an intern does at an office. I went back to school after we finished the week and I finished my exams and then I had the intention of going back. You could leave school back then at 16 and if you wanted to go to university or college, you had to do the final two years. So my intention was to do the last two years of school, so 17, 18, which is called sixth form in the UK. In the summer before I started sixth form, I'd gone up to London with a friend and my uncle lived in London at the time. And, you know, going up to London was a big deal. I was a country girl, I was a farm girl. Mm -hmm. And so we were sort of up in London, you know, walking along Oxford Street, King's Row, going to the museums. And my mum called me one day and she said, you better go and poke your head into the modeling agency because, darling, it's not what you know, it's who you know in fashion. That's true. And that was one of the many shrewd pieces of advice my mum's given me over the years. And so I sort of, you know, begrudgingly kicked my heels and went and poked my head in. And there was a new booker and she said, you know, it, I've been tasked with building out a new faces division. Can I take some Polaroids of you? This, you know, maybe something. And she took some Polaroids. All because you came back in. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. She took some Polaroids, she went back, she came back, you know, 10 minutes later and she said, you're going to need to grow your eyebrows back. We'll have to do something about the hair. The braces, I guess, they'll come off in time. Hopefully the skin will clear up, but what do you want to go out on some castings? And I thought, all I want to do is go on a shoot because then I can see what job opportunities there are within the fashion industry. Because really you didn't know no photographers, idea. hair, makeup, I, all production. All I knew was these images that you'd see in magazines. And, and I was always fascinated by what went on to make these images. What was the creative process of it? Who was on set? Um, it was just so magical to me. And so I said, yes, I would love to. Went out on some castings and very quickly started to get, you know, opportunities to do test shoots. And then quickly from that started to, to get bookings. And it was then a few months later, I was in New York. Oh, wow. So I've always been really lucky with my career. I've always worked. Yes. Whether the work has been quality work or not <laughs> is up for dispute, but I've been really lucky I've always worked. So Did you move to New York really I then, young? So that was when I was 16. I then spent a bit of time just traveling. I went back to school. You know, I remember my mum saying to me, and I sort of had a bit of a breakdown, and she said, your father and I will support whatever you do, but this sounds like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I think you should run with it because it seems to be going pretty good. Oh, they were completely yeah. supportive of it. And so at 17, I decided to leave school, go full-time, and I spent a lot of time in Paris and Europe, and then uh, went to New York for two weeks and called my mum and said, I'm not coming home, <laughs> I'm getting my first apartment, I love you, and she was like, great go for it. Wow. And it's truly been, I think, the biggest gift my parents have ever given me is the encouragement to fly and let me go That's so young. That's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. I think that if parents are constantly handcuffing their yeah. kids, then you're never going to yeah. know what their potential yeah. can be. My mom at 17, I graduated high school and the next month she was like, you have to leave this house. Yeah. She's like, it's, it's time for you to go. Yeah. I was like, fine, I'm just moving to New York then. Yeah. She said, great, go do it. And it was the best mm -hmm. thing for me. Even though I don't know if I would let my 17-year-old kid leave the house I know, now. and this is the thing. Now, being a mom, I look back on that and I think, gosh, you know, every day I'm with my son, I think, oh, that's one less day I have of you in my oh. arms. You know, you really start to think of these things. That's why I always consider it being the greatest gift that they, that they could ever give me was just to give me the encouragement, the support, and still to this day... I know they're there. They're in the same house I grew up in. Um, they're just consistent support and normal and grounded. And it's, you know, I think it's kept me going through all the ups and downs. So Yeah, because I share a similar career in yours. I mean, in the beginning of catalog. Yeah. Catalog, catalog queen, queen, honey. I mean, yeah. like those cute little checks yeah. coming through. Yeah, exactly. Nobody would know your name. They don't mm -hmm. really know your face. Yeah. How long were you doing catalog until your big break? And I want to know what that was. Yeah. So when I started, you were either considered commercial or editorial in high fashion. Commercial modeling, as you know, is 
you know, brands, catalogue, it's smiley, it's happy, it's wholesome. We're dancing. It's approachable. And then editorial is much more creative. It's fashion. Bleached um, eyebrows. It's, yeah, it's, it's... Smug looks. Yeah, it's extreme. It's sort of... It's Fantasy. Fa it's fashion mm -hmm. and um, luxury. And so I always fit it into the commercial side. And as a commercial model, if you were successful, you made money. And actually, mm -hmm. in many cases, you made more money than a high fashion girl. So yes. luckily for me, even though it was never cr creative enough for me to do catalog, you know, it's pretty standard. It can be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you boring. know, how the days go. It really can. It can be pretty boring at times. But, you know, it was like you said, cute checks coming in. I was able to save. I bought my first apartment when I was 19. And for me as well, I didn't really have my big break until, you know, years into the industry. I pounded the pavement. I had a lot of rejection. I was doing work that, you know, I wasn't happy with. And I think that it really gave me this insight to the industry. It allowed me to kind of evolve and figure out what I wanted to do and dream. And so it was then, I think, at about 19 that I got my big break with Victoria's Secret. And then I had a few few great moments. When was, was Burberry? Burberry was on my 21st birthday. Oh. So that was really like a coming of age moment. And That's a big deal yeah. when you got that. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to come back to Victoria's Secret and Burberry. Yeah. But before then, what kept you moving? Like what kept the persistence of getting through catalog and, and just saying, I'm not doing what I want to do, yeah. but I'm going to continue to keep moving on this trajectory. First of all, because I left school so young. So let me be candid. I had nothing else to fall back on. Right. Second of all, I was making money and I could see that I was saving. And, you know, like I said, I had kind of taken a leap of faith to do this. I did not want to like go back home with my tail between my legs and I did not want to go back to school. And third of all, because I really, really dreamt and I could see this opportunity for myself and I just knew if I worked hard enough and I played my cards right, I could get to where I wanted to be. That's cool. And I find like creative visualization really the core of any success I've had in my life, whether it's in my personal life or career, like that is at the core of everything I do is that I've allowed myself to see myself there. I always have a five-year plan. I know where I want to go. I'm ambitious. It's, that's, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Do you do vision boards? I think I do. Well, I mood board everything in my well, life. Yeah. My team will tell you that. But I just have always seen. I've seen that, that, you know, where I want to be. It's funny because last time I was home, my mum just went, where does it come from? Like, I just don't understand. <laughs> Your brother and sister aren't like this. Your father and I aren't like this. And I think it's something I feel lucky that's always been, you know, in, in me. You um, had a taste of it and you couldn't yeah. go back. Yeah. Okay, so then how old were you when you got Victoria's Secret? I was 19. Okay, so Victoria's Secret, holy crap, you booked the job. Mm -hmm. Was it everything and more when you went on set? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How many was, shows did you walk? I walked five shows. So <gasps> I worked for VS for about five years. It was a dream come true. I'd had an American boyfriend for a little bit and he said... We were walking down Broadway and, you know, the big store in, yes. in, on Broadway. And he said, that's what you want to do. That's Adriana Lima and that's Giselle. And I thought, yeah, that is like, that is, that is amazing. Like that is the best of the best to be, to be part of that company. And mm. so uh, luckily I'd actually had years of doing catalog and years of doing lingerie. Mm -hmm. I was always the lingerie catalog girl. Because you were so curvier than, a, than I the was runway girls. I was to be curvy and I was short and I had boobs and I had a bum. I think they tested me out on one shoe and then the bookings came. They were always slow with me. I was never kind of like the girl there. I was just always very, very proud to work with them at that time, yeah. And that kind of helped catapult you mm -hmm. into high fashion. Yeah, I think there was a real shift around the age when I was about 24. Victoria's Secret had led me to Transformers, which was my first film. I'd actually met- Which, she's not an no. actress, people. <laughs> she's not, remember when we I'm first met? I'm definitely not an actress. I remember when we first we'll met at that. Brandon <laughs> Maxwell, and we were sitting there front row, and I was like, so, oh, you live in LA, is that because of your job? And you go, oh, do you think I'm an actress? <laughs> And I said, yeah, I just saw you in Mad Max. You were awesome. You were like, no, 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 I'm not an actress. Yeah, no, I'm not. Um, definitely not. It was an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm glad I did it. But I I feel that it was 
something I feel really lucky I got to try my hand at, but nothing, I never felt a passion for it in the same okay. way I, I feel passion for other things in my life. And that's a whole other story. <laughs> but um, yeah, that led me to Victoria's Secret. We'd done a commercial, Michael Bay cast me then in Transformers. And then with that came this whole, you know, repositioning of me within, within my work and also... At that time, the industry took a big shift. I think social media just started to come mm. into play. And I think that these girls that were considered to be commercial had much more, is approachability a word? Mm. There, was, there was just sure, something we'll make it that one. was that a consumer or an audience related to more with commercial models. Right. And so the industry would see, you know, these girls' followers and their audience was much bigger and the shift, a, the shift happened. then happened where you would start to see other women, you know, in these kind of high fashion and walking down the runway. And suddenly we were being embraced in a different way. And we had so a that, voice. Yeah. And then, of course, social media really has taken off in the last few years, which mm -hmm. we can talk about because that is. I mean, your social media is amazing. I swear you like put up a chair and I'm like, I want that chair. <laughs> oh, good. I don't know. It's like your aesthetic is so on point. You have a social media team that helps you? I do for Rose Inc. But oh. for me, You don't I do have it. help for your no. own? No. I like to, I'm just taking pictures all the time. I see inspiration around me everywhere. everywhere. And I see it through furniture. I see it through art. I see it through galleries, architecture, fashion, film. And I just felt like, why am I not sharing all of these things that I've got like countless photographs about? And it's nice to know that people respond to them as well. And Well, I'm a responder. I like a cute grid. Yes, girl. Well, your grid is real cute. <laughs> and it's consistent. It's very color coordinated. <laughs> so let's fast forward yeah. to you did fashion. Mm -hmm. You did runway. Mm -hmm. you're, you've just had so many great moments. And now you're a mother. Mm. And Jack is two. Jack is two in a bit now. Oh, yeah. and I just, I want to talk about like, mm -hmm. what is that? What does motherhood mean to you? Oh, it's just such a journey. It's hard to even put it into words, really, because I will say I don't think I was in any way prepared for the emotional side of becoming a mother. Really? Um, I'd never really been around babies before. I knew it was time to start a family, and I knew I had this inkling in me that I wanted to have a baby, but the maternal instinct never really kicked in until I gave birth. Really? It was incredibly overwhelming on so many different levels because here was here I am with this newborn baby that I had this overwhelming sense of love for and it is a huge identity shift and so mm. that first year for me was a mix of like pure joy a lot of anxiety learning as I went redefining my identity to myself to my partner to my work to my son and it's a very intimate kind of personal experience and really beautiful because I feel like I've evolved and grown so much. And there is just nothing that comes close to how proud I feel of, of him and how much, I mean, I just stare at him, I could stare at him all day long. So sweet. Yeah. yeah. Because you're so close with your mom, mm -hmm. have you taken any advice from her yeah. in raising Jack? Yeah, you know, it's funny, I think as well, when I when I found out I was pregnant, you do a lot of looking back on your own childhood. Right. You look at the things that were really impactful to you, the things that really shaped you, the things that you... Didn't shape you. Things that didn't shape <laughs> you or did. Um, and you start to kind of cultivate your own way of, like, parenting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had such a great childhood on on so many levels and that but there are a lot of things I want to do differently you know I'm 32 this is 32 years ago my parents came from you know completely different generation and you know the world I'm living in now compared to the world that I grew up in which was a very sheltered rustic country life and the world I live in today and the challenges and the opportunities and the exciting fast-paced world that I live in is is very different from my own childhood and so yeah, she's there. She's there at the end of the phone. And again, just such a huge support. And she's just always got my back. Do you know what I mean? I totally, my mom's the it's, same. I I've can been call able... her and be like, I've done this. She's like, no, you're in the right. You're in the right, <laughs> darling. <laughs> I know sometimes you just need that. You just need to know that, Aww. you know. 
That's so, really good to yeah. know. My pregnancy has been yeah, this how like, it be? it's been like a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, my first trimester, I was just tired and like mm -hmm. a little queasy. And then like towards the end of it, I think I just started crying a lot because yeah. my body was changing yeah. so rapidly. And you know- Let's talk about that. Cause oh I want to talk about that. I have had- really terrible days. I've yeah. had really good days. You know, everybody can tell you how cute your bump is, but when your body is changing mm -hmm. so rapidly, it's like you kind of have to like succumb to it. Yeah. Did you have a similar experience? Oh, yeah. You did. I gained a reasonable amount of weight. <laughs> I gained I'm there too. I gained about 55 pounds. Pounds. Um I feel like I'm on my way to there. Yeah. I'm like at 40 right now yeah. and I've still got two more months. Yeah. Listen, I enjoyed myself. I let the reins go. <laughs> you know, it's a new experience. So you're kind of like, well, let's see how this goes. And six months in, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Crazy. It was an intense journey. And the same thing, it was kind of like so magical to see your, I never felt more like of a, at, towards the end, I just, I basically walked around naked for the last month yeah. at home. I was in the pool all day and I just walked around, I was like, fuck it, clothes don't fit anymore. They don't I don't fit. look cute. This is me. <laughs> like, and so um, by the end, I just felt really empowered in my body, but it took a minute to get there. And then certainly afterwards, when I'd had Jack, and I would look in the mirror and I was like, I've got 35, 40 pounds to lose. Right. And I go to the gym, go to the gym, go to the gym. It's not falling off. It's not coming <sighs> off. It was a very humbling for me because, you know, having had a certain body type, yeah. my, you know, for most of my life, certainly the, the last few years, I'd never felt fitter. I was very lean. I was in good shape. And people always ask me about my body, my workout. And you hear yourself saying, you know, work out three times a week and da 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 da, -da. And I just felt like, I, no, I cannot <laughs> tell people how to feel about their bodies because right. everybody has a different experience. And I will say like working out in the gym and looking back at myself and feeling like shit, I was like, now I understand like how hard it is for some people to get to the gym. And it just took so long to see that weight shift. And I've had girlfriends that have lost it within two or three months, there was that bounce back, there Those was people. that thing. Oh. And for me, I breastfed for six months, I didn't lose a pound. I breastfed and I ate so much because you're starving and you want to eat, eat, eat. Oh, I was more hungry when he was born because you need to make milk, right? right? Your body needs that. I would eat a whole box of bran flakes First time in my life I've ever craved bran flakes. Oh. Anyway, it, it did, it took a full year. It was just after the Met ball and I got on the scale and I was like, oh, I'm back to where I was before, but it took a long time and it was a real humbling experience for me because, well, yeah. I remember there was a little bit of press too about you at the in your swimming suit mm. and the press was like mm. tearing you apart mm. and it was so ugly that what yeah. they were saying about yeah. you. I couldn't believe. That's funny because I, I didn't know anyone ever really sees that stuff and um, I was on a shoot. The only my, reason I yeah. saw it was because obviously it's in my wheelhouse yeah. and pe somebody had sent it to me and was like, yeah. isn't this disgusting? Yeah. This girl is like a size six. <laughs> I had gone on a shoot for uh, my swimwear line. Yes. Um, we were in the Caribbean and frolicking around the beach, having fun with my team, you know, very unselfconscious. And the next day we're all on the shoot and the photographer's like, oh, there's tons of paparazzi shots. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm always like that. Cause I don't, I, I actually find being papped very uncomfortable. It's I not do too, something especially that when they sneak around. Yeah, it's very just unnatural. The whole experience of being spied on or even if they're there, it's something I've never really kind of gotten comfortable with. So the press comes out and, you know, I read it. Like sometimes you just read these things. I don't often read stuff, but I wanted to see the pictures. And so I read it. And I was kind of taken aback by some of the comments that people had. And more so what it was upsetting for is the kind of narrative around how women are supposed to look. It wasn't so much like, oh, that's really hurtful towards me. Like I kind of am used to things over the years. I can brush it off. It was just like shocking, like to see someone write another body ruined after a baby. And you're oh. like, what the fuck? Like, you know, oh. sure, I haven't bounced back. It's seven months later, but like, I'm, you know. You looked amazing. <laughs> 
The like, fact maybe that I have a little press, more juice, but it's one of those things. It comes with the territory. It does, but it's not fair. It it's was, never fair, and it's never nice. I was quiet for a couple of days. It stung for a couple of days, but you get on. It makes you stronger. And it, it, does. it But really, it was more kind of like, really, are we still at this place where we have to have Defend this our bodies? pressure of, like, bouncing back after a baby. It's just everybody's body is different. Everyone's on their own journey. And I really totally. want for every mother to really focus on herself ultimately, but also the time with her child. And mm. it will come and it will happen. And it, everybody mm. gets back to a place where they feel good again. And well, that's good advice. I'm because taking Because I that. feel better now then. And I <sighs> feel a different respect for my body than I did before. I'm going to take that yeah. advice home and really keep it near yeah. and dear to my heart because I keep thinking about what's going to happen after, but I need to not. I need to think about focusing on my baby and the yeah. nourishment. Yeah, focus on yourself. And the love. You know, it's I think but not everyone, the pressure. Yeah, but not, not, the, not pressure. the pressure. And yeah. I weirdly, I didn't put a ton of pressure on myself because I could have probably lost it much quicker, but yeah. I just was at home. I took time off work. I was with, yeah. with my family and it was slower, but you know, you never get that time back again. Yeah. You never do. So I'm glad I did it that way. Is this part of the reason why you decided to not put Jack's face on social? For me, it was just like, it's a no brainer really. Like I just always felt really strongly that it should be Jack's decision if he wants to live a public life. I just dread the idea of him turning around to me at 15, 16 and being like, you and dad just didn't protect me. You mm. hoard me out. It should be his choice. I want him to feel normal because without trying, it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to bleed eventually. in, you know, and it's really different for everyone. And I don't judge either way, but that's what feels most authentic to me. And that's what you know, I, no, it's I good. Just, I, I'm so curious because like, you know, yeah. in having this baby. And by the way, it's so hot. My son's yeah. gorgeous. I don't want to share with everyone. <laughs> How do you do it then with family? Are you just like sending photos out? Yeah, and you just tell send, them we... like, don't post? People are really respectful. Jason and I have always been pretty private. private yeah. you know, we've been together for 10 years now. It's like, we're pretty low key. We just like to keep things real. And I want to walk through my front door and be, you know, have normal, a, normal and real. And then when I go to work, it's like a, a shift of identity. And yeah. it just helps me like, kind of process everything. I need to feel that down to earth thing. Well, let's talk about what's going on right now with you. <laughs> Rose Inc, baby. <laughs> I mean, the whole creative process happened in your third trimester. I'd had the idea of setting up a content platform for quite some time. Every time I'd sit down to do an interview, the journalist would ask me for my tips, my tricks, and I could just see there was this appetite for it. And so I had this idea and I've always been a lover of like fashion magazines and blogs and websites and content platforms. And so I really just kind of wanted to build something. And so for several years, I'd been really thinking about it. And of course I was on a plane every 10 days, two yeah. weeks, every five days, like I was traveling all over. I said yes to everything. And I had um, fallen pregnant and I thought, okay, I'm still gonna work. So I still had to work through my pregnancy, but I'm gonna sort of strip back on the traveling a little bit. And um, I built out a team and we literally sat around my kitchen table for a year whilst I was pregnant, as I was breastfeeding. And still now Jack comes in for, <laughs> for some of the meetings if we're ever at home. Now we have an office, but we started in 2017. We started to build and then launched 2018. You know, we're 18 months in now. So 18 months in. So when you first started, you mm -hmm. had seven employees? Yeah, we've got about, yeah, six, seven employees in the office. Okay. And then, you know, we have, like our sort of creative teams that, you know, we're kind of outsourcing and work with on a regular basis as well. So videographers and photographers and editors right. and graphic designers and all of that. It's like people that don't on. need to be in the office every day. So yeah, it's a, it's a full on operation. It's kind of, and growing and changing quickly and ex very exciting. Rosing is a full digital beauty form. Yeah, think of it like an online magazine for beauty. My intention was really to build a community of beauty lovers and to share everything that I've learned over the 16, 17 years well, in because the makeup chair. As right? a model, it's like you know? every day you get a new tip or trick. Every single day you're working with a new artist or an artist you've worked with for years. And I just felt like this is what people want to know. You know, I want to like democratize this kind of information and make it available for people. 
And so, and I, and it's also my passion and I want to share. I want to know what mm -hmm. they want. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to start a dialogue and a conversation around something I feel passionate about. I feel comfortable talking about. And so we launched the site. Um, I launched a YouTube channel and it's really been about celebrating artists within the industry, highlighting hero products, highlighting new experts, new influencers, and just kind of like having this place where we can all talk and share and talk about everything and anything beauty related and, and deeper and what beauty really means to people on a, on a deeper level. So I know I actually started using Katie Jane Hughes because you posted her mm. on your Instagram. I know. She's the best. She's so great. Yeah. And it was like, who is this girl? And then she, mm -hmm. it's like, she didn't have an agency. So I had to DM her. Yeah. And it's like such a new wave yeah. of how to book. So I love, that's one of my favorite things about social media is finding new talent and building relationships with them and it's been really special to be a small part of some of these people's like stories and you know there's just so many different ways of launching your career now there's the traditional route as an artist and then there's this new wave and I and I just really want to celebrate all of it. Where do you see Rose Inc in the next five years? Um, I see the content continuing to strengthen and, you know, all the other things are coming. I don't want to. I know. Products? Well, yeah, let's. let's I mean, you have perfume. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. Uh, you've sent like really great packages. Yeah. I see. Like, I'm ambitious. You know, I, I, I have a five year plan. I'm not going to say anything today, but. All those things are, are okay. So there's are, skincare, there's yeah. makeup, there's hair, there's all the things, <laughs> all the things. Um, and also, you have Mark and Spencer's yes. autograph mm -hmm. uh, for Rosie, and that lingerie. Yeah. I mean, it takes over. It is. I mean, it's everywhere. Yes. How long have you had that line? Seven years now, which is flex incredible. on us. Tell us some yeah. stats, girl. Yeah. So I signed with Marks and Spencer's The Face of Women's Wear, and that was about eight years ago. As a young model. I always had done a lot of lingerie shoots and I'd worked for VS. I decided to walk away from VS um, when I was 24 because I really knew that I wanted to have my own line. And there was just what, there's sort of, I kind of reached the ceiling for where I could go with VS and things shifted at the company. Right. And yeah, things are shifting still. <laughs> <soon. laughs> wow, wow. Um, so that's another conversation. <laughs> but um, I felt like it was time for me to kind of branch off and do my own thing. And um, I always believe like, a piece of career advice somebody gave me is that you should always kind of look at your partners and your relationships and your contacts that you have already. And so I started to do a little bit of research on Marks and Spencer. And what I very quickly learned was that they are, you know, by far the most dominant lingerie retailer in the UK. They own a third of the lingerie market in the UK. Wow. So the statistic is like one in three women is wearing a Marks and Spencer bra at any time. So one in three women mm -hmm. probably have Rosie on their boobs right now. Hopefully. Woo. Yeah. So I think then there's like a funny statistic and, you know, statistics or whatever, but it's like one in three women are wearing a Marks and Spencer bra and then one in three is wearing a Rosie bra which is kind of cool. So wow. whether that's true or not, I don't know. Well, we'll but, just say it is. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so I did this sort of research and I kind of very boldly as most of my kind of beginnings of things start and naively in, in a way went to um, the board and the heads at Marks and Spencer and said, would you be interested in doing a collaboration with me? And they said, yeah, let's, let's do it. And it's just it. that let's, easy. Let's start it small. Don't know if it'll go anywhere. We'll do a season. We'll just keep it really small. And I think, you know, at the time they just wanted, you know, to have my face in lingerie. And so it was an opportunity to do that. It's grown into sleepwear. It, we, we dabbled in activewear, swim, fragrance, beauty, wow. loungewear. And so it's this kind of. This That's a great brand. example yeah. of just going out and getting what you want. Listen, that's just the way I do things. It's like I see something. I go after it. What's the I love worst that. someone can say is like, no, no, it's be bold and just kind of go after what it is that you want. If you truly believe in yourself, I feel like other people believe in you. It's infectious, right? I love so, that. Yeah. So you're a mom, you're a businesswoman, you're a wife, you are a model, you're traveling, you've got employees. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're a style icon. Um, you're giving me anxiety. I know. <laughs> it's like, ah, you have a hot bod. I mean, there's just so many things. But what is the work life 
yourself balance, like self-care balance. I know there's no such thing as yeah. perfect, but what is it for you that keeps you grounded? I know that you have talked about the four agreements being something mm. like a book that was mm. really near and dear to you. But I, I just want to know, like, what is what is that that keeps you grounded or keeps you balanced? It's a really big question because I feel like it's definitely what I'm living right now. And being a new mom and being somebody that finds a lot of passion from my work, finding that balance is a struggle. Prioritize my family first and foremost. And that's just like no neg non-negotiable. -negotiable. Yeah. But you know, with a career like ours, it kind of can come and go very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it probably will, you know, you're, you're in it, you make hay while the sun shines, you see opportunity and you, you sort of have to stay on top of it. And that's also something I feel like I've always tried to do is kind of look ahead and, and say yes and get mm -hmm. on with things. And the balance is just something I don't really know if I believe in it. Um, <laughs> I think it's another pressure. But I think that That's prioritizing cool. your family first, trying whenever you're in one scenario, whether I'm at the office or whether I'm at home, whether I'm on a shoot or I'm out with my son or I'm on vacation and I'm, you know, kind of whatever I'm doing for work, wherever I am, I try and be really present. Mm -hmm. So when I'm with my son, the phone goes away. You know, I'll go lock it in my bathroom. My time is him. I'm going to be devoted to him. When I'm at work, I'm focused on that. And of course, I'm reachable. But, yeah. you know, surrounding myself with a really wonderful team. I have a wonderful team of women that I work with and a couple of men who I, who I adore. Um, and Jason really is, you know, ultimately one of the most real grounding, <laughs> grounded people I know. And he... Um, is honestly the most supportive person Aww. I know. You know, he really has always encouraged me and always my number one fan. And it goes both ways. And I think with that and with the encouragement of my parents and the support and love of friends and family around you, you sort of feel like you can fly a little bit. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a really busy couple of weeks and I'm craving to go to London on Sunday and know that I'm going to have a few weeks off and like, I can take my son to all the museums. I'm Aww. just so excited to like take him to go see plays, spend some time with his aunt and uncle That's and great. grandparents. And, you know, so all those things and making sure you really schedule the time with your family. And like going on holiday is really it's a big important. Deal. Jason took off two years yeah. uh, during your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. That's just so sweet. Yeah. I love that. And I'm still, I'm like, when are you going back to work? <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he's in a different place too. It's really... I was thinking about it the other day. It's really cool because when we're at home in LA, I have almost like a nine to five. I'm, you know, out during the day and he is at home a lot because he has, you know, he's an actor. So right. he's either gone for a few months or he's at home. And um, when he goes off to work, I typically kind of go off with, with wherever he's based. So his last few projects have been in London, which has been great. We can sort of relocate. And when I'm in London, things are a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm away from the office a little bit right. more. I'm not as available. And so, although I'm, you know, we're always available phone and, and whatnot, but um, it's, it's, I sort of saw it as, you know, we're able to really kind of support and be flexible with each other's projects. And I, you know, I sort of realized it and felt really grateful that we have that kind of flexibility between us. But yeah, he took, off, he took off a good couple of years and um you know he's he just loves being a dad it's, i love it it's really kind of cool to see that's how a great much he loves and to Aww. see this big tough like yeah. strong persona just like <laughs> mush Aww. with jack is really cute yeah <laughs> yeah well that's a great way to end this thank yeah. you so Thanks, much for being Such here a pleasure to be here one last thing that mm -hmm. we do on pretty big deal mm -hmm. is we do a lightning round of live boldly rapid questions okay so you just have to kind of answer the simple question okay. what's the last pretty penny you spent i bought a bottega veneta clutch with gab yesterday oh, another one <laughs> yeah how many do you have a now? lot it's oh. really bad which but color is it i bought a beige i bought a beige new kind of crust I don't oh know like the bubble kind of one kind of oh ooh. um 
but they're like collector's items. Yeah, I mean. they're collectors. And I they're collect so expensive. items. But yeah, so I bought that yesterday with her. Okay, yeah. biggest deal breaker. Biggest deal breaker for me is liars. Mm. And um, when I, 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 I don't like to work on anything where, where it's not collaborative. Like I oh, need yeah. to have my voice. I need to feel like I'm part of a Deal team. breaker. Yeah. Okay, and because you're on pretty big deal and you're a pretty big deal, what's a pretty what's a pretty big deal to you? <laughs> pretty big deal to me is um my son today coming out of um his little preschool with um like he's made some kind of like pumpkin picture Aww. and stuck a load of things. It's just that Aww. shit's like <gasps> the best. I can't yeah. wait for those yeah. days. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thanks, Ashley. Don't forget to join the conversation on social. Follow Pretty Big Deal on Instagram and Twitter and send us all your questions and comments. We want to hear from you. 